It started with motorcycles. I was racing motorcycles and I had reached the top level. I mean, I was running with the fastest guys in the nation. It's uh, the thrill, the, uh, the need to have every hair in your body stand on end because you don't know if he's gonna live or die. RC cars, believe it or not, it's a toy car. It actually took place of racing motorcycles. Hey! actual get your hands on, get your ass off the couch and actually do it. Oh yeah. This is the greatest hobby ever. Yeah. It's for kids, father, sons, idiots, everybody. My name is Bruce Edwards and I've been racing for oh geez. Almost 20 years. I was a professional, semi-professional uh, kickboxer. So I fought in a lot of tournaments. And I found that uh, racing is easier because when you crash the car, somebody else flips it over. And it's a lot less painful to race RC cars than to block a kick with your face. So uh, I, I just found that this worked out better for me. I raced motorcycles professionally for 11 years. When I met my fiance, Tony, I started kind of giving up on racing. So a buddy of mine said, hey, you know, run this RC car just for something to do. Of course, I'm thinking like everybody else, it's a toy car. Really? I race motorcycles, you know, this is a joke. I went from owning a $100 car to six months later and thousands of dollars into it and thinking I need to go racing and it just one thing led to another. It's a bad deal. <laughs> I've always been a racing nut for as long as I can remember. As a little kid, I always wanted to race cars. Parents said no. So, uh, uh, you know, I turned whatever, 20, 25, and, and figured I'd give it a twirl, and I've been racing for around 25 years now. So I'm probably one of the more experienced people in the hobby. <laughs> Traveled quite far to race these. Uh, we went to Missouri quite a few times up into Wisconsin, and the furthest one we went to was out in Omaha, Nebraska. This is my sport. <laughs> you are done. You got the bump spot. There is uh, nationals held in the United States. There's an off-road nationals. There's an on-road nationals, nitro, electric. It is all over the world. Every continent, there's racing, probably except for Antarctica. <laughs> you know? All right, guys, I'm going to make this short and sweet, hopefully. First off, thank you very much for coming on out to the Midwest Nitro Series Finals. Good. <laughs> Man, you're making me lose track already. I am the uh, race promoter, owner of Midwest Nitro Series, and professionally, I'm currently I'm unemployed. <laughs> Let's group together so I can get my group photo. Midwest Nitro Series rolls. One, two, three. Owner. Thank you very much. Good luck. All right. I've been running this series now for four years. The Midwest Nitro Series is a traveling remote control racing uh, series. We go to different tracks, have a one-day event. I score points based on finishing positions throughout all the mains. At the last race, I total up all the points and declare overall winners. I wish the fuck I'd be money at this. <laughs> if I was making money at this, I'd be racing. <laughs> yeah, I got another car. No. Last year in the middle of the year, I stopped racing and started focusing more on the series itself. If I could, uh, if I had the finances, I would be at a track today. I'm an adrenaline junkie. There is nothing I haven't found anything, not even sex is better than this. I mean, just racing, when that cars are, it doesn't even have to be me racing them, but you know, just having the control and the cars coming by and you hear them, 
why? I mean, that's just the power, the 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 control, the it's just it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, the the, the feeling is un, it, it, it's hard to describe, you know. Adrenaline that will flow through your body, just racing these cars. It's just I can't even explain it, you know. It's a rush. You smell the nitro fumes. You hear the buggies going, and it's just like, oh boy, here we go. I was unplugged from the world, nothing else mattered. You didn't care about bills, you didn't care about, you know, your kid getting detention after school. All you cared about was not getting beat on that track. I mean, I haven't been this nervous when I go up to the stand to go a six minute qualifier since I was in high school playing football. You know, it wouldn't be a fun race if you weren't nervous. I remember the butterflies were so bad before. Oh my gosh, they weren't even butterflies, they were bats. You know, you watch people doing it, some people their legs are shaking so bad they can't stand, their hands are shaking, it just, it's very intense. You get six or seven guys on the same pace, it's, it's one mistake, you go from, you know, you, you can go from the top to the bottom like that. up on the stand, they get nuts sometimes. So they'll take a little, you know, even though your friends and they're standing right next to you, they get excited and they get, <laughs> they get into it, you know? There's been numerous fistfights at RC tracks. The guy was talking crap on the driver's stand. I was walking away and he hit me in the back of the head. I turned around and hit him back a couple times. I walked away from my husband when pitting for him because I couldn't get something done fast enough and he started yelling and I'm like, yep, nope, I won't I tolerate that. Yeah, I can't be very competitive. I'm told I don't play well with others. If you guys want to drive like a bunch of idiots, that's fine. But this is my track and none of my guys are going to get hurt out here for ignorance of jumping and stupid because you wrecked on your own. You understand? You understand me? All right. Now, be a man and have respect for my emotions out here. Fire them up, guys. A typical race starts with qualifiers. A qualifier usually is five minutes long. These guys are out here running 11 laps within five minutes. After you're qualifying, you have your mains. Mains are sorted from the fastest to the slowest racer. I don't consider myself as competitive as I once was, um, but I still, still want to win. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't mind winning, but that really isn't <laughs> something that I get to do that often. So, yeah, yeah, if I don't win, I don't get the same feeling, you know, from second or third. I mean, it, I'm glad I 
podium, but first place. If you're second, you know that you know that the guy on the podium standing on a box taller than you is better than you. And I, yeah, I know I want to be number one, and uh, it's hard for me to lose. I don't know. I tend to be very aggressive, overly aggressive for off-road racing, <laughs> comically aggressive for off-road racing. What is your day job? Oh, I work as a printer. I run a large printing press, you know, uh, in Madison. Been involved kind of in it a long time. 25 years pretty much in that too. And it's going away, so I gotta find another one. <laughs> I've been driving a semi for 26 years. My profession is uh, I'm an auctioneer. Yeah. Oh, you want me to auction for you? Sure, yeah. Oh my gosh. Nobody gets me to auction for you. <laughs> there you go. It's you know, it's five, dan, 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 dan. now, donate now, donate now, donate five, donate five down, thirty, thirty, no, thirty five. I own a paintless dent repair business that I've done for 23 years, and I have recently bought a hobby store here in Peoria Heights, Illinois. Yeah, this is a race car. Look at this. About 10 hours of work. We'll turn this into a truck. And it's like 480 bucks. That's just a rolling chassis you still need. A motor, speed control, batteries, charger, controller. You still got about $2,000 worth of stuff to buy. So your initial investment is easily going to be $2,500. Easy. And he's got a sickness because he's buying one. And I'm not because I'm cured. It's <laughs> <laughs> right. not a sickness. I just have $1,050 in tires that are, I can use with this truck. You should see the faces of the people. And I mean, not little kids. I'm talking grown men. They'll come in here. They'll spend $400, $500, 1000 whatever. They're not even thinking about dollars. They're like wanting to go home and play with their car. I like seeing it. I think it's, it's a good thing to be a part of that and to see somebody else be happy, you know. I actually had a unit I didn't know how to get rid of it. I thought, you know what, we'll do a raffle. And the guy that won it is 45 years old. He bought one ticket and he's got a $1,000 truck for $15. This grown man's got tears in his eyes. I mean, he hugged me. He's a big dude. He hugged me. I, I felt like my eyes ball was going to pop out. Oh, how much have I spent on my cars? Wow, I don't even want to want to answer that question. I always wanted the best remote control car. I bought the best when I first got into it. I bought the world champion vehicle. I dropped $1,800 of my tax return money on a car. Well, I couldn't race back then. <laughs> I was getting my butt handed to me, but because I had the best, it didn't help me any. I just keep wrenching. I'm always working on something to try to make the car better. I would spend probably at least 20 hours a week just to go through the cars to get ready for, you know, a big weekend race. Eight hours a car just to go through it perfectly. Mount tires, uh, braking engines. There was a time when I was trying to get sponsored that I was spending so much money and so much time doing this, and that is all that I would do. I mean, my sister would schedule, you know, birthday parties around the, my nephew and my niece, around my racing, and, you know, they would always ask, well, do you have a race that weekend? Here, keep that window clean so your driver could see. Bill Eckelberg leaves it on that GQ Little things like that drive me nuts. All right. Yeah, sometimes, you know, it hits me like, man, I've done this, you know, for 20-something years on and off, and it's like, I, you know, just try to st start thinking of the money and time I spent doing it, that a lot of people don't understand. They're like, it's a toy car, you know? There's a couple other fast trucks in ours. What the hell am I even racing for? So you can block for me. <laughs> <laughs> you can be the bumper car. You want me to drive something else? Nope, I got it. Because I got my fuel. Yep. Let's go play. <laughs> this is crazy. I ain't parking back here no more. <laughs>
Okay, this this is a uh, a truggy. Basically, from here to here is generally most the same components as the buggy, which is a smaller counterpart. This is a buggy, one-eighth scale buggy. These are the electric buggies. Pretty much the same thing as the nitro buggy, except that they take the nitro motor out of it, put electric motor in it, a couple battery packs, speed controller. There are guys that are strictly electric, and there are guys that are strictly nitro, and either person would be electric socks or nitro socks. And then there's the crowd that, you know, they'll run them both. Nitro. No, without a doubt, nitro. I like the nitro end of it. Oh, nitro, without a doubt. Nitro. Nitro. And I'll be honest with you, I hate electric. I prefer electric. I don't want to race electric. Either one. I, I've ran a lot of nitro, but um, I prefer electric. The electric ones are toys, okay? The nitro ones are highly sophisticated, small racing vehicles. They're not toys. This is not something that some little kid just goes out and just goes bashing with. difficult to explain and man out live I have to explain that to my mom and my dad why are you going to play toy cars every week I think the toy remote control cars are something that you get at like Radio Shack or even a Toys R Us there's actually some people I have seen get very hot under the collar when you hear it racing with toy cars I've had people say oh you race toy cars and uh, I beat them to death. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I want to beat them to death. <clears throat> yes, people have mistaken that because they simply don't know. The level of sophistication, the vehicles themselves, there's really no difference between this and any other racing vehicle. some kind of a mechanic to work on these and it's not just the basic turning a screwdriver. You know there's a lot to it really a couple thousand things to know. You can set these things up just like you can a race car. There's so many different adjustments on here, whether it be the shock towers. You have camber, you have tow. Proper suspension, your engine tuning. Tires are about 75% of it. If you don't get that right, then you're in trouble. The track changes throughout the day as more cars wear in. If you don't know what changes what, you don't know what's gonna do to you on the track, you're done. <laughs> toy car going around a dirt track jumping, you're going to see in a half hour main 60, 70 laps of the same thing. Granted, NASCAR, yeah. Just so what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Man, that's NASCAR. 60, 70 things of guys going around and they're only turning left. We got to turn left, right, jump, turn, you know, all this stuff. NASCAR is boring compared to RC car racing. So we're having fun, and there's no threat of dying, yeah. right? We race a car, it flips over, it you know crashes. Yeah. We don't get killed, yeah. right? 
This one is kind of a memento thing. Davy Camlin was a guy I used to race with on the ice every winter, and he's now dead. Yeah, he was going on the straightaway at the mile at DeCoin in second place, and there's a draft. You know, you're drafting at 145 mile an hour. And he went to pull out the draft, and the guy in front of him, his engine blew up, which caused him to slow down instantly. So as he pulled out, it caught his front tire. So at 145 mile an hour, his bike stayed still. His head was the first thing to hit the ground. Everything was on the line all the time. And that's just how it was. So that's when like getting into RC cars. Yeah, I was more amazed than anybody will ever know that it was enough. The RC cars was so lifelike and so real. I truly kind of found my stepping stone to back down from racing motorcycles. I raced for a total of five years. The last two or three years of racing, I'd work three days a week doing my paintless dairy repair job, try to get everything done as fast as I could, and then I'd go straight to the track the next day, or I'd even take days off work and spend eight, 10 hours solid at the track. Sometimes I'd leave first thing seven o'clock Thursday morning, I'd drive all the way to Danville, Illinois, to go to a different track. And I'd try everything there, and then I would drive to Joliet to leisure hours, and I would try everything I just tried the day before and change different weight fluid, front, center, and rear shock fluids. It's a lot of work. But then I would write down all my findings and find out this works here, this doesn't work, this causes this. For about six months, I paid really close attention. I'd eat different meals before races, pay attention to how I felt, my results, when I would eat, what I would eat, caffeine intake, your brain functions, your reaction times, your nerves, everything about you has to do with what you're eating. Real quick, I became the person at the racetrack that people would be like, good grief, dude, is this all you do? I would spend time with the family, put the kids to bed. As soon as she starts to fall asleep, I would slide out of bed. <laughs> I put my clothes back That's on, and I head straight out to the garage and get in the trailer and start working on my RC car. And he'd even lie. I'd be like, if I woke up, I'd be like, where are you going? Faster and faster. I'm thinking, with your shoes on? So, <laughs> kind of weird. I would do that, go to bed 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. I did that all the time. All the time. I love this hobby so much, and I don't even own a car. I have everything of mine in a rolling toolbox. I take this on the bus, on a train, throw it into the back of a cab if I have to, or in the back of my buddy's trunk. I got up at 4.30 this morning. I won't be getting home until probably almost the same. When I raced, I, I got competitive. I was going twice a week, sometimes three times a week. I was gone nights. I would be gone every weekend, and I was away from the family more, and they started to resent me racing. Until you've like been in it, people don't even understand how you think. They could think you're crazy. Well, because it's an addiction. It changes your mind. You think differently. I got one of those addictive type personalities that when I found this, it, there was, you know what I mean, it was definitely, um, yeah, that would go without saying. You know? But actually, I'm not that bad because I really don't spend that much money. You know what I mean? And I don't spend more money than I have. You know what I mean? And I, I, I well, maybe I do. For me, it's always been a kind of overwhelming passion, uh, especially early on because I was uh, really gung-ho. I would race three, four, five times a week. You know, I should probably do it less than I do, but I still spend an awful lot of time at it. And you can spend as much time as you want on them, you know, at home and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's probably not the best for relationships. Years ago, back when I started, I, 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 I had a woman I was with for quite some time, and, and uh, uh, you know, I've had a few different, you know, a few, but no, I'm not, I'm not married and I don't have any kids, so, uh, which is probably why I spend so much time doing this. I came home from a big race one time, and uh, little did I know when I got home, it, it was empty. She took everything. I think a lot of it had to do with RC, so she got really upset about it, and uh, yeah, she was gone, and I was like, oh well, start over. I still got my RC stuff at least, so yeah. But 
I don't know. I don't see how they can't see. You know, it's better than going to the bars or strip club or whatever. You know, it's playing toy cards with a bunch of guys. How could you not want somebody to be with like that? But did it change your life, <laughs> family-wise? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Boy, oh boy, does it change your life. Maybe. Uh-huh. If you're going to be devoted to it. What was your ex- ex-wife's phone number? We'll ask her. Yeah. <laughs> if, it changed, if it changed your life, then he... I think you could take that about any any form, any sporting event, anything, right? Any, any athletes, if they're going to be that into something, you know, they're just not going to have the kind of time to do things. back one you can either jump the whole thing or you can hit the table and then do a double to and you actually cleared the whole entire thing yeah no 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 not to the whole corner no did you see the awards no, check them out you gotta see the awards i won't be seeing one of those hanging on my wall anymore will i look at that nice huh Dude, that is awesome and it's functional if you wanted oh, yeah. to i got mine hanging at the shop oh nice 2010 baby did I ever feel satisfied from racing or winning? It's funny you ask that. Um, no. It didn't matter what I did. Um, I've asked myself that question. I won the championship for the Pro Buggy class in 2010. I never did like sink in like I had accomplished. Like, ta-da, I got there. All these goals I set for myself, because it was a personal goal. I found myself thinking, why are you even doing this? There was no fulfillment. So I don't know, I guess that's still a question I don't have answered. At the end of the day, we're racing with toy cars, spending $1,000 to $2,000 on tools, uh, equipment, everything. Spending all day, all night working and racing just to win a 50 cent piece of wood and a 25 cent sticker on it. I'm an addict, yeah, I'm a straight addict, so yeah, there's no doubt about it. If I'm not racing, I'm at home going, where can I go to race? Where can I go to race? I've been racing approximately about a year. I started this year. Favorite part of racing is split between getting out there and just driving that buggy at a 40 mile an hour down the straightaway and hitting that brake and hoping she turns, you know. And it gives me a lot of time with my dad too, and my mom. Uh, they always come my race, they support me 100%. I got a little bit of a Kentucky accent, so it might come out. <laughs> yes, I come to every race. When we first got started, I'm like, this is way too loud. <laughs> but anything to support my son, that's the best. It's the best. My girlfriend comes and um, supports me, so does my sister. And then you beat all these cool guys. They do anything for you. And that's what's just cool. You, just, you kind of make a family. <laughs> I go there to race, and that's fun. But the, the, by far and away, you spend more time in the pits talking to each other, hanging out, teasing each other, you know, helping each other, you know, eating crappy food. Look at the rock star. Take the shades off so it's more personal. I, they're interviewing you right now, Ash. Man, you're 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 in the you're just trying to sneak your way in, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Many times I had a big race where I did something dumb and I crashed and I lost the race because of it. Where I wouldn't be able to sleep for a couple days. Man, I don't even know what to say. That was like real. Tell him you like it, sir. I tell him I'm going to rub my nuts across his head just to see what it feels like. Oh, I forgot I'm uh, Mike. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> just the camaraderie of all the individuals. If you needed help or if you want something from somebody, these guys are more than willing and able to help you. 
you can show up with a car and know little or nothing about it. My wife's like, you know, how can you just do that? You're out there 20 hours and stuff. I mean, the guys are just, they're great. This is our religion. This is our religion. <laughs> taken a couple of one-year breaks, maybe two of them, and uh, each time I come back because a lot of my friends are there, all my, all my friends are there. The racing is kind of the, the actually, it's, it's the thing that brings everybody together. It took over. All my hard work is paying off, but I wasn't really getting out of it what I probably should have been getting out of it fulfillment-wise. I felt like I was missing something, and it was my family. I was missing kids growing up. I was missing, you know, some games and missing, you know, different things that happen without the house, stuff that causes the true happiness. I had been thinking about it for a while, so when I pulled the plug, I knew I was done. And everybody else was in disbelief because they're like, okay, you're a junkie. You're not walking away from this. Now, of course, one might think, well, you're in a hobby store and you have a RC racing addiction. Isn't that like owning a bar and being a recovering alcoholic? And it is. Had I never raced RC cars, I would have never owned a hobby store. This hobby store, I believe, could be something that, you know, years to come, it'll be what I get to do when I'm old. I'll still have a place to go. I'll get out of the house. It'll give me something to do. In first place. With 809 points, Sonny O! There was a point where it was getting to me so much that I was like everything. And now it's, I'm trying to have a little more fun with it and not take it too seriously. And I actually seem to be doing better that way. Oh, okay. One more. One more. Come on, say sorry, guys. I guess as I get older, I probably feel like I should calm down a little more. <laughs> Some days it goes bad. I don't really know. Wouldn't go forward, wouldn't do anything. Uh, Made noise, though. <laughs> Yeah, they always make noise. Yeah. <laughs> this one made cool grindy noises too, you know? Yeah. So. The noises we really don't want to hear. No, no, those aren't the right noises. No. Watch the ring. Burp, 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 burp. burp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, no, it is what it is. Yeah, there you go. camera. Well, this is another prerequisite for RC car racing. Gut. Gotta have a gut. <laughs> Matt, that's Matt's first win. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Matt's only a couple years in, so he's a relative newbie yet. So this is exciting for him to have gotten to beat not only Greg, but take the win. So that's cool. We like that. You know what I mean? That's all good. Matt's like the world's nicest guy, so it's always good when he does well. Why do you think you you need that? Why do you think you thrive on that competition? You could go to you know someplace like a uh, you know in a track and just race against yourself. Well, because I could also masturbate, and uh, that's not as much fun as having a partner or racing. You know what I mean? You understand? That's why, 
That's why we race against other people, okay? Masturbation's okay, but racing against 10 other people. <laughs> it's a lot more fun when you got a party. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna make it. <laughs>